Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to be back. I would like to share a couple of things from our week. Well, firstly, some of you don't know what we keep talking about our last week, and some of you probably don't know what happened our last week. So we had our family vacation this last week. We went up to Sholo, and we got to stay with some dear friends up there for a couple of... It was going to be one night, and then the forecast said, hey, you might want to make it two nights, given that our next stop was camping. So we stayed for two nights and had really good fellowship, got to visit their church up in Sholo, and um, had a great time. It was very, very edifying, good, just wonderful. We'll tell, talk more about it later. And then we went out and went camping for... Uh, it was Monday through Friday was when we broke camp and returned. And so that was, that's what we did last week, and we did indeed have a theme. And the theme was be still and know. Be still and know that the Lord is God. Our, our camping time was wonderful. It was also one of the more difficult Family, uh, probably the most difficult family vacation we've ever had. One of the primary reasons being that it was really cold. And the first night, especially, we were not, you know, we had just kind of set up what we thought would work as far as sleep, the amount of sleeping bags and blankets. And some of our stuff had gotten wet from the rain, so we couldn't use that. So Bethany and I had probably the, one of the worst nights of sleep we've ever had because it was just freezing. And so after the first night, we were able to recalibrate the, our, our frame of reference, and uh, thenceforth, we slept under like 30 sleeping bags or something, something ridiculous, um, but we were warm from that point on, so that was good. So it was challenging. It was also challenging physically for Bethany. She, had, she seems to have contracted some kind of sinus infection from the campfire smoke, it seems, because the rest of us are fine. It doesn't seem to be a sickness of any kind. And uh, so she just, for a number of reasons, didn't feel super great over the course of the week. So all of that to say it was challenging as well as wonderful. There were all sorts of of great memories and wonderful pictures and so on. And my son this morning was praying that we'd get to go camping again. So it was definitely, it was definitely a lot of fun. But the challenges were part of what the Lord was teaching us through the week in resting in the Lord, being satisfied in Christ, and realizing that we can't make stuff go the way we want it to go. Whether be that physically, like I want this to be an awesome family vacation, or be it spiritually, like I want my heart to, I want to have more faith, I want to have more, more joy, I want to have more fill in the blank, that's something that we can't necessarily gin up. We can't just make that happen. And we're not called to scripturally. We are called to walk in obedience to the Lord. There are some things we can choose to do. You can choose to, um, what's the verse, in your anger, sin not, right? You can choose to lash out. You can choose to strike someone in anger. You can choose to lie. There are things that scripture commands us. You're irresponsible before God. You're not a slave to sin. You, you do need to choose this. You can choose to walk in righteousness before God. In Christ. This is, so this is not about legalism. This is not about you can choose to do enough good things that God will like you now. That you're, you're good. You've earned your salvation. That's not what we're talking about. Our salvation is in Christ. But having been saved by the blood of Christ, our faith should be a living faith. And scripture gives us commands that we are supposed to follow. That said, that doesn't mean that therefore we can build the house in our own strength. So Psalm 46 was our, the psalm we were meditating on over the course of the week. And so I'd like to make some observations from Psalm 6. We had, sorry, Psalm 46. We were reading Psalm 46 and we were reading in John. Those were the two places that we went to. Psalm 46 is a psalm that gives us a lot of self-revelation about who God is. So it's easy to get used to reading scripture and for it to kind of bounce off our ears as Bible talk and to miss what's going on. When it says things like, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I don't know about you, but I've heard that verse a lot of times. And so it's easy to smile and nod. Yeah, yeah, I know that. That's what the Bible says. I've heard that verse before. And you got to pause and you got to meditate on that for a second 
and apply it to yourself and realize what that's saying. This is God's self-revelation in Scripture to us. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. So whatever the trouble is in your life, God is telling you, God is telling me, I am with you. This is the kind of stuff that becomes trite to us and we hear it in, in a bunch of pop Christian music and it just kind of sounds fuzzy and, and gooey and, okay, but I want, I want real Christianity. Wait a second, this is real Christianity. Yes, you can get out of balance to where it becomes kind of this self-focused, uh, mealy mouse, God is kind of like my, my, my Linus blanket, he's my security blanket, and that's all he is, he just makes me feel better. Okay, that's a problem. But he is our refuge and our strength. He is a very present help in trouble. He is right there. He is with you. And you can read this psalm and you can say, God is my refuge and strength. That's not twisting scripture. That's applying scripture. God is my refuge and strength. He is my very present help in trouble. God is telling us this in his word. He's revealing himself. He's saying, this is who I am. I care about you personally. I am a refuge for you personally. I am your strength. I am your present help. Call my name. I am with you. That's God's self-revelation. If you look in the book of John, you don't have to turn to the book of John, but I'm just going to refer to it. We see, and I'm sure you're familiar with the story, the man comes to Jesus and says, uh, my son is is at the point of, of death. Come and heal my son. And Jesus, it's interesting, Jesus' response is kind of a rebuke. This is John 4, 47. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and was imploring him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. That seems kind of random. But we know it's not. So clearly Jesus is, what, responding to something going on in his heart maybe? Or to the people around? I don't know. But Jesus is clearly seeing a problem. There's a faith issue here. You guys want me to keep doing signs because unless I do signs, you will not believe. And the Lord convicted me with that verse because I see that in my own heart. How often is that the case with myself? Unless I see signs and wonders, I will not believe. If I'm out there camping and my heart is saying, Lord, why is it so, like, are you, do you, are you even real? Do you even care? Why is, are these, these pro, why is the smoke blowing in my face from the fire? Can't you just make the smoke blow somewhere else? Well, yes, he can. He's not obligated to. But I was just convicted. It's like, that's this. That's this right here. I, my heart is happy to believe in and trust in the Lord when everything's going well, perhaps. But then when there's a fly in the ointment, well, what is it? That's this. I, no, I want to see signs and wonders. Lord, answer all of my prayers exactly the way I wanted you to, and then I will believe. Well, number one, probably not. I mean, if that's your perspective of God, if that's, if that's the kind of faith you have, that's not biblical faith. But number two, that's not God's God's job. He's not a genie in a bottle. So Jesus rebukes the lack of faith. But then I love this. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started off. So a couple things. Jesus says, Go, your son lives. To me, to, applying that to myself, Jesus says, go, your son lives. That's that specific application, right? Your, the, the resurrection of the son or the healing of that son. But Jesus commands the man to go. I just find that interesting. Get on with, with life. Trust what I said and go do what I've called you to do. And what does the man do? He believes the word that Jesus spoke and he starts off. He obeys. He walks. He doesn't know. He hasn't heard confirmation that his son lives, but he accepts. Okay, Jesus said he will heal my son, so I'm going to obey. I'm going to go. 
As he was now going down, his slaves met him, saying that his son was living. So he inquired of them the hour when he began to get better. Then they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew it was at that hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed, and his whole household. Note the second. He he believed again. There's a second belief. Right? So there's another level, another stage of belief. There was, okay, I'm believing the word of Christ and I'm obeying. And then, wow, I see the fulfillment and he believes more fully. I think it's, a, it's wonderful. God is merciful that he blesses us even when we're at that first stage of belief, that mustard seed of belief. Okay, I believe enough to take the steps. I'm going to start walking home and believe the word that Jesus said. What does that have to do with our psalm? Well, a lot. Because... What did he believe? He believed the word of Jesus. So do I believe the word of God when he says, I am your refuge and your strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains slip, and back in Psalm 46, though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. What an interesting phrase, when morning dawns. You ever feel like you're in a time of night? You ever feel like it's dark? Every morning is a sermon. Every sunrise is a sermon. God keeps his promises. Night only lasts for so long. It's almost Christmas time. You know what? You know, Christmas time in the calendar year comes right around the winter solstice. And what's the winter solstice? That's the longest night of the year. And that is just beautiful poetry because night gets longer and longer and longer. And then Jesus comes. Amen. And then night gets shorter and shorter and shorter because that's what Jesus does. He pushes back the darkness. And God will help her when morning dawns. So if you're in a time of night... Sunrise is coming. Keep believing the word of God and going home or to to your work. Be like that nobleman. Okay, God is my refuge and strength, so I will go. Whatever this darkness in my heart is, God is my refuge and strength. I believe the word of God and I will go and I will do and I will trust. And he will reward that faith. Praise God for that. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice. The earth melted. You feel like you're living in a tottering kingdom right now? I do. Speaking of America, I mean, it doesn't get much more tottering than we see right now, right? And God is completely sovereign over that. God's voice melts the earth. God's city will not be moved. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. He is my stronghold. He is with me. Selah. Come, behold the works of Yahweh. Feed your faith on the works of God. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. Go look at what he has done. Look at the works of his power. Even as we watch America totter, that is actually a work of God that should turn our hearts to worship. This is God doing what he said he would do. When people reject Christ, when we try to cast off the cords of God, what does scripture say will happen? He who sits in in the heavens laughs. He will hold them in derision. He will scoff at them. And that's what God is doing. This is Romans 1. This is not cause for our hearts to fear. This is cause for our hearts to behold. God is at work. God is keeping his promises. He is bringing down those who refuse to submit to Christ. And he is exalting his name. And he says, cease striving and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And that's balm for the heart. I would say I don't know about your heart, but I do know about your heart too because I know we all have the same sinful hearts. And I know my heart needs that. I spend so much time striving, so much time anxious, afraid, trying to figure stuff out, make it work in my head, in my life. Be still. 
let go. Relax and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. What does he tell us to focus on? He doesn't say be still and know that I am God and I will fix all your, all your problems and make your life happy. That's, that's not the point. That's not the end game. That's not what we are here for. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. This is the end game. This is where it's going. He will be exalted. And because of that, our hearts should be still. Not because he's going to orchestrate everything to go exactly the way we want it in our life. Although we do have promises that he will work all things for our good. And even right here that he's with us and that we don't need to be afraid. But get your eyes off. Our hearts get all worked up because we get stuck on these little molehills and we make them into mountains. And God is saying, look at Mount Zion. Get off of these molehills and look at Mount Zion. She will not be moved. And that's where your citizenship is. So be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is my, is our, my, your stronghold. Selah. Amen. Praise God for that.